what we did was sort of like that to search once in our Bible study. If you have your Bibles today, or tonight, please open them to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39. For the last several weeks, we've been speaking about prophecy. In the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about nations that are prominent uh, during the tribulation period, nations that are key. Uh, one of them is Israel. Another one is the European Union, which really is not one country, but uh, a group of countries, part of the old Roman Empire, rising up and will be eventually controlled by the Antichrist, and which is Cuba will extend over the entire world. Now, in, as we take a look at this today, I'm going to speak about Russia. And is Russia important? It is very important. Because the Bible talks about in Ezekiel 38 and 39 of a large war, a war that is going to take place during the latter days, uh, which means during the tribulation period between Russia and a, a whole group of nations together against the nation of Israel. If you remember with me that back in 1991, the Soviet Union was dissolved. But the future of Russia is very, very clear. There is coming a war after the rapture when Russia will make its move against Israel. And it's clearly outlined in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And actually, Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 is probably one of the clearest outlines of exactly what is going to take place between uh, the nations that are confederate against Israel and Israel itself. It talks about the nations, names the nations, talks about where the battle is going to be held, it talks about Israel and how helpless she will be against uh, this confederation of nations, which is uh, Russia and the Arab-speaking nations and maybe even other more, other co countries, and also what is going to be the result of this war. So what we're going to do right now is have a word of prayer, and I pray that you have your Bibles open to chapters 38 and 39 of Ezekiel and follow with me. And I will explain exactly the details of this coming war with Russia. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, please bless us now, Lord, as we take a look at this extremely interesting topic in Bible prophecy. We pray that the things that we learn now will help us, Lord, as we keep our eyes open, watching how things and events of the world today are moving towards the culmination of this teaching here about Russia uh, invading Israel. We trust that God, the Holy Spirit, you would teach us and also guide my mind and my heart, my voice as I speak and pray that you be glorified. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, the first thing we're going to take a look is the Russian aggression. Russian aggression. It is described very clearly in Ezekiel 38 verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read it, just make a couple of comments, and then I'm going to go into more detail in just a few minutes after that. It says in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 1 through 6, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief priests of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold him against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. I will bring thee forth and thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomar and all his bands, the house of Tagamar of the north country quarters, and all his bands and many people with them. Now, in Ezekiel 38, 39, describes his invasion by Russia and mostly Islamic nations. There are 10 proper names in Ezekiel 38, and I'm going to be explaining them in just a few minutes. Now, Russia, as a name, does not appear in the Bible, but in the Hebrew, the word Rosh, R-O-S-H, does appear. And Rosh, Russia, is that what it's referenced to? Now, where is the, the location of the argument of this, this, this problem that's going to take place in this war? Where does the attack come from? Well, let's just take a look at Ezekiel 38, verse 7, uh, 6. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarmah 
of the north quarters and all his bands and many people with them. You know, I want you to notice the word north quarters. And if you notice verse 15, please, we look at verse 15. It says, and thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. So we see the north parts. Now, if you have a map, okay, in the back of your Bible, but if you have a world map or a globe or whatever, and you take a look at Russia and Jerusalem. Now, let's just stop for a moment. Uh, ancient Jewish rabbis and Ezekiel saw Jerusalem as the center of the earth. And in looking at Bible prophecy and looking for the future, which is the millennium kingdom of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes and sits upon his throne in Jerusalem, Jerusalem will be the center of the whole earth. If you would take a look at Jerusalem and go north, just go upwards, up the north, you will come into the area of Russia. Okay, so Russia is directly north of Jerusalem. Now, we talk about the location, okay, Russia and then of Jerusalem. Let's take a look at the alliance. Russia is the leader of a coalition of nations that will attack Israel. In its brief history, Israel has been attacked and has won against her attackers, but never has ever fought a war, a battle, where the odds were so lopsided against her. Now, as we take a look, we're going to take a look at this alliance. I'm going to be reading these proper names, and I'm going to give you a description of what these names represent and what they are. In verse 2, it says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Gog is the leader, the leader of Russia. The land, Magog, represents Russia, Rosh, the Russian leader, Gog, and that is like probably a title, just like we call president or a premier or something like that. Gog is probably the title of the leader of the Russian army and the invasion of Israel. Magog is the land. Now, let's take a look at the countries that are in alliance with Russia. And notice that these countries all hate Israel. That means today, the year 2020, they hate Israel. Let's take a look. It says here, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Now, who is Magog anyway? Magog was the grandson of Noah. If you look up in Genesis chapter 10, you'll notice that there is a list of names of grandchildren and descendants of Noah, and they settled in different parts of the, of the earth. Uh, they settled, the Magog settled in the area of the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea. And those countries today, if you look in that area, the countries that are there today are all Islamic, and they all hate Israel. In verse 2, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, Meshach, meaning Moscow, Tubal, meaning Tobolsk. They all, both today, they hate Israel. They hate Israel. We move on to verse 5. Persia. The name Persia was changed in the 1930s to Iran. And Iran and Russia are close allies. Close allies. The strongest ally that Iran has is Russia. And if you read the, the news accounts today, read the news accounts, Iran would like to destroy Israel and wipe Israel off the face of the map of the earth. We also see in verse 5 that not only is Persia, there is Ethiopia. Ethiopia takes the, the name of the Ethiopia, takes in the country of Ethiopia, but also the Sudan. And both of them are strong Muslim countries and they have something in common. They hate Israel. Then there is Libya, which is a Muslim country. They also hate Israel. We move on down to verse 6. Gomar. What is Gomar? Germany. Germany. Now, Germany has a history of anger and hatred towards the Jewish people. They are anti-Semitic. They are anti-Semitic. So they fit in with this alliance that Russia is going to make to attack Israel. And then it also says the house of Tagarmar. 
Now, Togomar represents Turkey. I remember when I visited Turkey about four or five years ago, I can remember when I was speaking to the Turkish guide, and I was talking to him about Bible prophecy, and I mentioned the name Togomar, and his eyes lit up. When I shared with him that 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 Togomar, that Turkey is involved in Bible prophecy, he was extremely interested. And I shared with him that they will join together with the Russians. And right now, though uh, Turkey is supposed to be lined up with NATO, I wouldn't put any money on them at all. They're an Islamic nation. Their current uh, leader, president of the country or whatever, is very anti-Israel. So we find out over here in verse 6 that, that Turkey is going to be aligned with these nations. And then in verse 9, it's very interesting. In verse 9, it says, Thou ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a land, a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. With the words many people, it's possible that there's going to be other nations that will join together with Russia and these Islamic nations and Germany to go and battle against the nation of Israel. So that is the commander of the alliance's Gog. He's the leader, the Russian leader. Magog is the land. And then, of course, the rest of the nations here. Now, when we take a look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, we're going to take a look at the attack. Russian attack. Why will Russia attack Israel? Why? Well, if you take a look at Ezekiel 38, 11 or 12, the first reason, they want to seize Israel's land. The Bible says in verse 11 and 12 of Ezekiel 38, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them at rest that dwell safely, all of them that dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods to dwell in the midst of the land. The first reason why Russia will attack Israel is that she, meaning Russia and these nations, want to take the land from Israel. If you take a look at Israel, where it sits, it sits almost like a doorway into Africa. It also stands as a doorway leading into Asia Minor. So we understand it's a very important piece of land. And number two... They want to take this Russian invasion wants to come about because they want to steal Israel's wealth in verses 12 and 13. To take a spoil, that's wealth, take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods, to dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say of thee, Thou art come to take, loan us the word, a spoil. Thou hast gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away the cattle and the goods, to take a great spoil. So Russia wants to take and conquer Israel because he wants to steal the wealth of Israel. Now, Israel is wealthy in many ways, but one of the great places of wealth is the Dead Sea. It's estimated that the minerals in the Dead Sea are worth more than a trillion dollars, and it could be much more than that. That was a number of years ago. Together with this piece of land here, how valuable it is. So they want to steal Israel's wealth. And then also, there's another reason why Russia will attack Israel, because Russia and the Confederation of Nations want to slaughter the Jews. Verse 16. It says, And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog. Remember, Gog is the leader of the land. O Gog, before their eyes. So this anti-Semitic hatred of the Jewish people, this movement of hatred, which has been going on for thousands of years, is reaching a, almost a crescendo point. It's leading that way because the Antichrist will take over after Russia is eliminated and this confederated nation, confederation of nations. And we find out the desire is to kill the Jews. So we know why will Russia attack Israel? To seize the land, 
to steal Israel's wealth, and number three, slaughter Israel's people. Now, the question comes in this battle, where will the Russian invasion occur? Where is it going to take place? Where is it going to start? Where? Well, in Ezekiel 38, verse 8, it says, After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been already weighed waste, but is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely of them. Where will the Russian invasion come? Well, it's going to be against Israel. It's going to be right near the borders of Israel and coming in. Now, let's just take a look at the size. Israel is eight, I mean, Russia is 800 times larger than Israel. And you add in the other nations that are working with them in this battle, the odds are overwhelming against Israel. It's overwhelming on the scale of understanding if the chance It's like a million or 10 million to one that Israel could possibly win such a battle, considering that Israel is in a position at this time of being in peace. So something is going to take place with the Antichrist and the peace treaty where Israel is going to relinquish their their military hardware and not be at the strength that they are currently. Uh, And we find out here comes this massive invasion against Israel with all these nations being led by Russia. Now, when will the Russian invasion occur? When is it going to take place? It takes place when Israel is in her land. She must be in her land. Let me read a couple of verses and explain a little bit of seeing how how close in Bible prophecy we are and how big this is. Uh, Ezekiel 38, verse 12, it says, To take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gathered and gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Chapter 39, verse 25. The Bible says, Therefore, thus say the Lord God, Now I will bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and will be jealous for my holy name. Verse 28. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which calls them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I've gathered them unto a land of their own land and have left none of them anymore. Now, in 1948, Israel became a nation again. But why that's so important, and there's a lot of reasons, and how miraculous this really was, is from since 70 A.D. up into 1948, there was no Israel. No Israel. Russia could never have attacked Israel because there was no Israel. So all these prophecies that we're looking at in today are at a point that would become real because God moved that this nation that did not exist over 1900 years now becomes a nation. And we find out over here that because Israel is now a nation, it is reminding us how close biblically and prophetically we are to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Israel must be in her land for this scripture to be fulfilled. And before 1948, that could never even happen. But now, because of 1948, Israel becoming a land, Jerusalem, as of 1967, being a city under the control of Israel, the Jewish people, we find out that Israel must be in her land. But number two, Israel must be prosperous in her land. Chapter 36, verse 11. This is all of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 11. The Bible says, I will multiply upon you man and beast. They shall increase and bring forth fruit. I will set to you after your old estates and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Growth and prosperity for Israel when she goes back into her land. If you would take... Um, a look at what Israel looked like, the land of Israel, Palestine, before 1948, is completely different than what it is today. Why? Because God has prospered the Jewish people in their own land. Areas of land that were nothing but desert and, and barren or whatever now has been blossoming because Israel, her people, are back in the land. 
Now, Russia wants to take away that prosperity. She wants to take away its technology, its innovation, its wealth, the Dead Sea minerals, which is estimated to be trillion dollars, probably even more, of the valuable mineral wealth that Israel has. And it's very possible that Israel has oil. And I believe what I've read over the last few years, there's discovering pockets of oil here and there. So it's very possible that Israel sits upon oil, uh, a large amount of oil, which will be either discovered or they're kept in quiet right now. So we find out when will Israel or Russia invade Israel? Israel must be in her land, number one. Number two, Israel must be prosperous. Number three, Israel must be in peace. Chapter 38 of Ezekiel, verse 11. The Bible says, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land. Notice the wording, unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, them that dwell safely, of the, all of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars and gates. And the Bible says in verse 14, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel, it says, dwell it safely, Shalt thou know it? Now, as of today, Israel does not dwell in safety. Okay? She does not dwell in safety. She has military protecting her because the Arabs want to kill all the Jews. They don't want peace. The Arabs do not want peace. They want the blood of Israel. They want the blood of the Jews. They want to kill them. So she's got to be in a safe position, a secure position. And that has to happen yet. But there comes the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, a verse that we have been speaking about several times in Bible prophecy in the last several weeks, is a key verse of understanding Ezekiel 38 and 39. And that is, and he, that's Antichrist, so conform or confirm the covenant, that is the peace treaty, for many for one week, that's seven years. And in the midst of the week, in the middle of the seven-year treaty, he breaks it. He causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease. What that means is that part of the peace treaty, part of the conditions of peace, is that the Jews will be able to rebuild their Old Testament temple once again. They will be able to, be able to build it on the Temple Mount. And when they build it, they'll be able to offer up sacrifices of animals like they did in the Old Testament. Now, for us who know Christ as Savior, that's all been done away with. When Jesus, the Lamb of God, was offered up as a sacrifice for sin, all those offerings and sacrifices of the Old Testament have been pushed aside. But the Jews have never accepted Jesus to be their Messiah. So they're going to revert back to the Old Testament way of offering sacrifices for their sins. And the Bible says, for the overspreading of abominations, he make it desolate, even until the consummation and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So what we find out over here, for Ezekiel prophecy to be true, Russia is going to attack Israel, but she's not going to be able to attack her until this peace treaty is being in effect. And then she will make the march against Israel. Now, Rishu, now that we find out the, the result of the battle, it's not much of a battle at all. It's not much because God is going to intervene on behalf of Israel. Russia is going to be annihilated. It's going to be annihilated. In Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 15, the Bible says, And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, that's Gog and Magog, and the confederation of nations, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, a mighty army, the Bible says. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. And I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. The attack will be massive. It will be massive. It will be like a cloud that covers the land. There is no human way for Israel to survive this attack. It says in Ezekiel 38, verse 18, it shall come to pass in that same time when Gog, that's the leader, shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy, in the fire of my wrath, have I spoken. 
Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. God is personally going to deal with these atheistic nations that do not know him. He is going to fight for Israel. He's going to fight for Israel. 39, Ezekiel 39, verse 7. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Everyone's going to know that God was intervened here. All of them. Israel will know her God did this. All of them will know that it's almost impossible for Israel to win this battle. She's defenseless. She's at peace. Russia and her confederation of nations are attacking her with this massive army. That's massive. And all of a sudden, God is going to intervene. Now, what's going to happen? First of all, there's going to be convulsions. In chapter 38, verse 19, let me read it. For in my jealousy, oh, chapter 39, 38, verse 19, excuse me. For in my jealousy and the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. There's going to be convulsion going on, shaking going on, earthquake. And then there's going to be military confusion. Look at this, chapter 38, verse 21. And I will call for a sword against them throughout my mountains, say the Lord God. Look at this. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. Their own army is going to be fighting against each other. It's amazing what God's going to do. He's going to cause confusion, and they're going to be fighting among one another instead of fighting with Israel. And we notice also there's going to be a contagion is going to break out. A contagion is going to break out. Chapter 38, verse 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. I will rain upon him, upon his bands, upon many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Because of the massive amount of dead bodies, disease is going to break out among the, about the soldiers that didn't die yet. And then there will be all kinds of calamities. Chapter 38, verse 22. I will plead against him with pestilence, with blood. I will rain upon him, upon his bands, upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and hailstones, fire and brimstone, just like with Sodom and Gomorrah. God sent down fire from heaven, burning up the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to be sending great hail. Everyone's going to know that, wait a minute, Israel survived because God intervened for his people. Flowing rain, fire and brimstone, great hailstones. So we find out that God's name is going to be exalted through this battle. Now, what is about the aftermath of the battle? What happens after the battle is all over with? In chapter 39, we're going to see the disposal of the bodies. And the invaders, the the amount of bodies dead is going to be enormous. First of all, let's talk about the bodies and the birds of prey. Chapter 39, verse 17. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, Speak unto every feathered fowl and every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come and gather yourselves in every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that you may eat the flesh and drink the blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of the rams, the lambs, the goats, the bullocks, and of them fatlings, fatlings of Bashan. Ye shall eat the fat till you be full, and drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I sacrifice from you. The Bible teaches here that this is going to be a sacrificial meal to the birds. God is going to have these birds of prey are going to come in and pick the bones of the dead and to drink the blood that comes out of the dead bodies of these that went against Israel. There's going to be burnings. In chapter 39, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says here, And they shall dwell in the cities of Israel, shall go forth, and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields, the bucklers, the bows, the arrows, and the hand staves, the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. So they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any other the beasts, forests, excuse me. They shall burn the weapons with fire. They shall spoil them that spoil them and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord. We're going to find out here all the military equipment of, that was left behind by these armies that were slaughtered and killed by God. 
they're going to be burned. And it's going to take years to burn them. And the Bible talks about burying whatever bodies are left in chapter 39, verses 11 and 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel. The valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, it shall stop the noses of the passengers. They shall bury Gog and his multitude. So the leader is going to die, but a multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hamagog. That means the multitude of Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. For seven months it's going to take to bury the dead. How they're going to do that, I have no idea. And according to Ezekiel, 84% of the Russian army will be totally annihilated. The greatest military upset there's ever been. Well, when you have God on your side, those things are, are nothing. Our world is in trouble, but we find out that God's in control. So as you read the papers, as you see the news events, watch Russia. She's that old bear is back again, and she's working behind the scenes even now. And she has great hatred to Israel. And according to what we just read, Ezekiel 38, 39, clearest description in the entire Bible ever of the exact outline of the nations, the confederation against Israel, where the attack is going to take place, who's going to be fighting the battle, why the attack is going to take place, the reason why, and the outcome. And you know what? All will know that the Lord is the Lord. Why don't we stop our study at this moment? Uh, We want to continue to be praying, because this is Wednesday night Bible study and prayer. We want to continue praying uh, in our situation, what we're in with this crisis. We want to be praying uh, for our nation. We want to be praying that this uh, crisis would subside and that we can get back to semi-normal. We're not even in semi-normal today. But we want to be praying that we'll be able to go back to work be able to have church services soon. We want to be praying for it. Uh, We'll keep that in prayer. We want to continue to pray that these messages, these sermons, these Bible lessons would continue to go out according to what uh, Walter has told me. Uh, Pastor Walter, last week there was over 430 views of the Sunday morning sermon and close to 100 on the Wednesday night Bible study. We want to continue to pray that souls would get saved unsaved people would turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. We want to also continue to pray uh, for the health and welfare of our members of our church. Uh, I just found out a few days ago that, uh, that George Hernandez uh, came down with the virus. I spoke to him Friday, and George seems to be doing all right, but he was tested positive. We want to pray for him that the symptoms would not be, uh, that the symptoms would be mild. We want to continue to pray for him. We want to pray for all those that are working in the health care and those who are working uh, as essential workers, that they would be safe. We want to pray for that. Continue to pray for the tithes and offerings of the church. And if you're going to support this ministry, please, you can do it two ways. You can send it in, mail it to the church, or what you can do is uh, be able to give online on the uh, church's website. So we want to continue to pray for them. Please pray for our missionaries. We have missionaries who are trying to raise support in our country, but they can't. They can't go to the churches because a lot of it's closed. Uh, We want to pray for those men and women. And also our missionaries that are on the foreign shores, praying that God would be with them uh, and protect them and give them safety. So I'm going to lead in prayer, and then we're going to pray that the next Sunday uh, we're going to be preaching about walking with God. That's going to be the sermon next week from a man called Enoch. And we're going to see what it means to walk with God. We'll be talking about that the following Sunday. Let us pray. Father in heaven, please bless now this message that we gave today. And we're so thankful that the Bible is so precise. It gives the exact teaching. It gives us clear direction about something that's going to take place very shortly during the tribulation period. And we pray for the peace and safety of Jerusalem. We pray that many Jewish people would turn their eyes to Jesus and be saved. Give safety to all of our members in our church. Be with George Hernandez. 
who is not well. We pray for him for healing. We pray for Shonda Webb, who was sick, and she's feeling better. We pray for a total recovery. And we pray for all the health care workers and those who work as first responders. We pray for safety and grace upon their lives. Please be with our president, the governor of this state, and all the local officials, Lord, that you give them wisdom about dealing with this terrible crisis and about men and women in our church and many churches going back to work and be able to open their businesses. We pray for them, Lord. We pray that many souls would come to Jesus. We're praying for that. We know that the rapture is not that far away, and we get closer and closer for that day to come. Please bless us now. And, dear Father, continue to use the Silver Lake Baptist Church to be a bright and shining light in Essex County, but also because of the Internet, it could be places well beyond uh, Essex County. And we give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.